Um, so this is, uh, yeah, so here we're talking about, um, and Elizabeth here is uh, presenting with me. To, well, she's really here to just answer questions. Uh, but uh, about uh, tracking progress uh, towards the uh, goal of elimination and uh, the role of a database, a global database um, for epi and lab data could play in that. Um, and that just comes as you, you've seen this uh, map several times over the past two days. Um, it's been popping up all over the place. And we made this map based on a bunch of data, right? The, the, this map is, is the result of a huge data collect, you know, data curation process. I wouldn't say collection because we weren't in the field collecting it, but we were curating and bringing together data from a ton of different sources. And to make that happen, we had to create um, and to like deal with all that, we had to create an infrastructure uh, to deal with all the data, to handle to all the data. And right now, uh, this infrastructure looks like this. Is, is we have our incidence data and it comes into our cholera and lab database and we'll, we'll see um, why it's a lab database too in a second goes through a pipeline of analytics and from that we can produce maps we can use you know that is to produce burden projections impact of control it feeds the the data feeds the analytics it's a unified feed the feed the analytics and so the thought is is this work can be leveraged that we've put together to solve our internal problem can be leveraged to solve the problems on a more wide scale more globally and for the GTFCC more generally. So, and also there's no, the database can be extended such that it doesn't just include incidence data, it, do, it can include serological and molecular data, it can include risk factor data, and then, that, and then on the other side, it doesn't have to just be producing the type of analytics our group produces, it can serve as the back end for other ways to access information on global cholera and control. Uh, so, you know, to talk about why this is complicated and why we have a, a particular structure, you know, there are a lot of different sources of, of, of surveillance data for clinical cholera. You know, things come from Ministry of Health. There's re scientific research studies. Uh, there's media research, you know, summaries, uh, reports from global organizations. Uh, and they can all look very different and contain very, very different types of information. So this was the problem we wanted to solve and that we have solved for our mapping efforts was to take all these different kinds of information and put them in a way that they're, it's useful and standardized. Um, and uh, the, you know, the um, sort of organizing principle we take to do this is that we take, you know, we have data, we have different pieces of data and more generally documents and those are linked to locations and time periods, right? So um, this is Malawi and, uh, you know, so we may have a, you know, we may have an incidence curve that is, you know, a, a set of incidents that's for uh, the country as a whole for a long time or we may have uh, smaller and only partial, you know, for shorter period of time, data that's linked to uh, given places. And then, you know, by using this and ha using this organized principle, that lets us make our standardized descriptions of cholera epidemiology that can then be fed back into the database. So I'll just briefly show you what we have done and what we use now. Uh, so the, you know, so this is a, um, this is a screenshot for information about a single lo location. Um, this is Malawi. Uh, it has a location period and the borders of Malawi haven't changed over the course of our data. So it has a standard location period. We have a bunch of observation collections which correspond to documents that we have that have information about the incidence of cholera and the burden of cholera in Malawi. And then we have uh, child locations that uh, cor correspond to the administrative subsections of the country. Um, and so 
within that there is each of these like documents is an, is an observation collection. So this, you know, so this contains you know a link to actually the original source document. We have uh, the administrative various bits of administrative data about like who owns it, who should be in contact with it. Is it something everybody can access? Is it something that's private? Um, from an MOU, and then there's epidemiological data about like what the suspect case definitions were, what the uh, confirmed case definitions are, and things like that. Uh, and then linked to this is a set of observations that uh, have, um, you know, that ha have correspond to places, locations, time periods, so we're very general. It doesn't have to be an epi week. It can be anything from days to years to epi weeks to, um, and then, then uh, particular outcomes here for this data set, it's deaths and suspected cholera cases is what we have. Um, and then, you know, we have the ability to go through and um, filter these observation collections by, you know, various locations and times to get a sense of where things were going. So that, that's kind of what exists. And, and I want to emphasize this based on this, you know, organizing principle of the whole database is that all data is indexed by these location periods. So we have a place and we have a time and there's data associated with it. But um, the nice thing about the way this database was built and the people we worked with about it is it's for any computer people in there in the audience it's weakly typed and what that means for plain language is means that you can associate almost any kind of data with a location period so it doesn't just have to be incidents data and documents about incidents it can be laboratory data it can be other types, you know, it can be laboratory data, it can be just documents uh, about and reports, it can be any number of things. So since it's weakly typed, it provides an organizing framework that could be used to hold various types of data. Um, of course, what we really care about is um, the user. Um, and right now, the users are the, the first two, two of these, um, data entry and data analysis. But uh, moving forward, the uh, thought, the, uh, the goal is to make it, you know, so a tool for global policy and for most importantly, potentially countries themselves. And this last part, it doesn't, I want to be clear that we're not saying that this is um, subsuming or, you know, in co competition or in contrast to other, you know, efforts around dashboards and things like that that are going on. And it could potentially be a back end for those types of efforts that the data can be provided. So uh, this is what we care about um, in our group. This is, you know, our data entry uh, interface uh, that, you know, uh, you know, that supports uh, double data entry of all of, you know, data from a variety of different types in a very flexible framework. So this is how the database looks to those people. Um, a, there is a programmatic interface, so um, you know this is useful for us because it allows you know for the analytics and for analysts for us to pull data directly from the database into our into whatever to run our uh, you know run our analysis analyses and generate our maps and stuff like that. It also the same interface could be used by other you know platforms, you know, dashboards or portals to access um, access to data. So this is, so now, okay, this is all existent. This is, this is, this is fantasy, or not fantasy, but, um, <laughs> but, but goals, planning, uh, ideas, uh, you know, so, you know, there, you know, there could be a interface, you know, that, the goal would be to have an interface that would be specifically um, for people from the global context, right, where you could look at um, data, you know, you know, you could select parts of the globe, you know, look at a broad level, look at um, the observation collections associated with that, various other data and analytic out outputs. Um, 
you could have a country view, you know, then, then the other would be to have a country view and it would be possible, you know, it's possible to have uh, roles. So there are restrictions on access. So if a country wanted to, you know, upload data here, here or information here that was not at, for every user of the database, right? They can have, you know, private or, you know, because why, why either because it was tentative or just because they don't want to, um, they could, you know, you can have private, you know, private things that were associated with just that country. And then here I'm showing as if we had, you know, Democratic P Republic of Congo and wanted to look at some previously run hotspot analysis. This is just a figure I pulled from a paper. So that's the um, general idea. And then for both of those, of course, it doesn't have to be, you know, as I said, the idea would not necessarily be to directly access the database that dashboards and interim layers could lie in between to access data from this. Those are just screenshots from something else. And then, you know, just to go back to this general structure, right, the um, structure becomes useful for both storing, you know, it, it, I think it becomes most useful when you think about it, not just storing these incidents data, but sort of has, as I've described it, the analytic out outputs go back into the database and become, you know, there and permanently associated. And in doing so, you know, ha and in having these series of analytic outputs, having a series of incidents stored for, sold for, uh, stored for a while, that becomes the tool, you know, that you can use to help track the progress towards um, elimination and reaching cholera control goals. So just to summarize, currently database contains incidence data from a variety of spatial scales. It's really uh, targeted to support data entry and analytics. At this point, it would be uh, trivial to open it up to trusted users who aren't part of, of Hopkins. Um, but uh, you know, the plans to extend for additional data types and bring those together make interfaces for particular users and it can be a back end for other people who are doing um, have separate goals. And that's all I have.